yet still we're going to go ahead and get started this is your host rgb on the i really mean it show podcast coming to you live and direct facebook live as well as on spreaker um and today is a little bit different than what i normally do um for those on the podcast you're you can join on rg brooks on facebook and i'm live there and we're going to give a special tribute to my friend um my brother uh, my mentor uh the late mr Burnell e smith ii who uh transitioned life uh on this past sunday october the 22nd and it was all of a sudden it was at the age of 45 and rather than make this a Um, sad occasion um, because it is tough anytime you have loved ones to transition. Um, We want to make this a joyous occasion of celebrating his life and I'd like for you all to speak on the impact that Burnell had on your life. So those listening on the podcast, you'll be able to hear from several folks hopefully here in just a second. Um, And so... If you would like to be on the broadcast, I'm going to invite you on. Um, and first, I'm inviting on uh, Mr. Chris Eagleston, uh, who you heard on the show before. Um, Chris is the president and founder of Global Innovation Now. And uh, there he is. Going on, Chris, what's going on, my brother? My brother, Chris Eagleston. Um, y'all can see him here and uh, thank you again for your help on helping me get this set up brother and for those on the podcast again Chris Eagleston president and CEO of Global Innovation Now um, been doing great work in Memphis for several years and now he's taking that out to LA and I know Chris you've had um, a lot of experience and and spent a lot of time moving business initiatives with Burnell and so if you could share that with us, you know, how did you meet Brunel? Uh, and then once you share that, share with the audience, um, you know, some of your best memories of Brunel E. Smith II. Man, man, where can I start? First of all, uh, man, you know, my, definitely my prayers go out to the family and, uh, you know, during this tough time, man. But definitely Brunel, man, he, 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 he was one of the, just a champion. And I met him back when I was just starting with the uh, Urban League. Actually, yeah. Memphis Urban League around about six years ago, and it was it was uh it was funny because I was always you know just trying to push apps on everybody and, and you know do my app thing and then tell everybody that, hey you know get an app get an app and uh, you know he was just you know with the, and he was talking about his newspaper and talking about the, the, the tri-state defender. And I was just like, man, the first black paper. And right. So we actually sat down, and uh, he ended up doing some work and out doing. And actually, he ended up getting the app. So you know, it was like my first black-owned business. That was when I was with another company though at the time. Right. And uh, but it's like I was just meeting him, and then we had uh, a few events in the Blue Restaurant, and then it was just on from there. Yeah. So after that, I'm, we start connecting on activist work. We start connecting on, you know, building the people and getting the companies to work with each other and network with each other and promote each other. Yeah. And uh, it was just like, you know, that's what he was all about, man. And uh, I know a lot of people, um, you know, are, are, are affected by it, but they should also be motivated by it that he wanted all the people to work with each other. We was working on so many plans, man, and we ain't going to stop, man. We're going to get those plans, one. And uh, one is getting a, a Martin Luther King statue built outside of the National Civil Rights Museum. You know, definitely respect for the National Civil Rights Museum, but we wanted to build something to where people can walk up and be inspired. Name one spot in Memphis that a black man can walk up and just be inspired. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. And that's something that we wanted to just build and say, you know, some people are a part of. So we're definitely going to, uh, I'm going to push that initiative real hard. I just really wanted to just, you know, you know, let everybody, uh, you know, you know, grieve at that time before we start just jumping out with program after program. But I'm going to be making my trips back to Memphis. But I'm so sorry that I couldn't make it to Memphis this time because I just had so much work to do. And, uh, and still working on a couple of projects, uh, Boys and Girls Club, 
Right. You know, that, and they got that close that deal, so we're gonna be doing something big with that and tying that into the one that back in Memphis too. So you know, shout out to all that, and we're gonna get that going. But it's more, it it it, it was it was like he always pushed, you know, the envelope, and he was always big on going here, going there, and going live. And to be honest, when I see him, he he remind me of me. You know, yeah. that's why I connected with him, and we we it was the. Uh, National Civil Rights Museum event that he had, where he reduced, where he released that he was going to come out with a business card, a black-owned business card, yeah. where black businesses just know each other. It's like that. We don't even have a directory where we know each other. And right. He has a thousand businesses. A thousand. Yeah. So that's something we're working on, man, and that's what we're going to work on, and that's what I want to work on. I want to, you know, you know, be real focused and real locked in. A lot of people probably hadn't heard from me, but it's more so about me being locked in and just, you know, not, there's no game. Nah, man, you can be, I can be, we can be shooting this post today and then, you know, next thing you know. So it's more so about focusing in on leaving the legacy, leaving the impact, leaving something that's going to, you know, not only make an impact, but make the kids, kids impact. And uh, that's what he would want, you know, and that, and that's what I'm proud that I can say, you know, he motivated me more and wanted me to do more. And uh, and that's what I'm going to do. Man. I yeah. Mean, I ain't, I ain't, uh, I'm, I, I've, I've been, I was, I've been hurt all week. I ain't going to lie. It just <laughs> pushing through it yeah. the whole time. But, you know, a uh, funny story that uh, we was just hanging out after the BET, uh, the Best in Black Awards. Right. The Best in Black Awards. And uh, we was just, man, just in the, in, in the uh, rooftop of the Western, man. And just, he was just like, man, this is it, baby. This is how we go do it, baby. Every year, every year we go do it just like this. And every year we was doing it just like that. At the end of the award, it was just like, I ain't even winning an award. I ever won one, but it was like every right. year I felt like a winner. Just because <laughs> right. was networking, connecting, man. growing the brand, and talking about the next move, and talking about the next open opportunity to not only be a part of something special, but to be memorable and, and, and grow it as a whole, as a unit. And that's all he wanted, man. He, he came to my event, that uh, that best, that uh, Black Wall Street event, when I was talking about Black Wall Street, spending the black dollar. Remember, we was we was hard on that back in the day, man. Right. And to this day, exactly. we still on that. And, uh, you know, and that's the thing. Yeah, Jonathan Prince, yeah, he said he motivated us all. He motivated right. us all to be great. Uh, this is a sad day, but it's also an inspiration today to know that, man, I know he left it all on the table. He ain't leave one stone on turn. He'll shoot. He'll go live. He'll promote an event. He'll do a fundraiser. He'll go to a show. He'll even show up to his, his kids' game. He'll, he'll uh, catch up with his wife. she drop them flowers off. Right. You know what I'm saying? All a man's bad, Doc. Hello, right. Man, you know, and then she Right. Yeah, no uh, doubt. So when you see that, when you see that, know that you know, you, you know, not only that, you know, he could be a part of not only something like that, but then you know, also be down to earth and, and really care about the homeless, care about the vets, care about you know, uh, civil rights, and, 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 and just seeing our people move, progress forward. And uh, I hope the city see that, and I'm sure they do, and everybody see that. that you know, that, that's all he wanted, and that's all we need to do as a people. Man. Just have a state, have a have a, a, a locked in idea of what you want to be. Set some goals and start, man. Start surrounding people to hit them goals, man. All right. right. I don't know what y'all doing, but I heard you saying you announced something big. Definitely, man. Be a part of something big, man. Uh, whatever y'all doing, I know it's right. something major. So whatever RL doing, y'all go to RL page. And I shared that. I think I shared that. If I didn't, I will like to just be. But um, it's all about you know connecting. Man. We have a thousand businesses. Let me let me just say the numbers, man. A thousand businesses he was networking with. Even if those thousand businesses just came together to put a marketing plan together, which that what we were doing put a marketing plan together with those thousand businesses, put up a hundred dollars, that hundred dollars goes into a marketing plan to promote those businesses. Man, that's a hundred thousand dollars a month in marketing, man. Come on, man. From Yeah. Come on, man. Hundred thousand dollars in marketing. Can a, can a thousand business put up a hundred dollars to be a hundred thousand dollars in marketing on one platform so they can all get the recognition. And the one platform was going to be a mobile app, and then there it is. It's just like, now you should promote that, you sharing that, 
everybody got their own category, things like that. You can promote it. $100,000 in marketing? Who, who's spending that in Memphis? Right. There's a thousand businesses in Memphis that can really be a part of that. And, 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 and even if even if it, somebody needs to put it together. And I'm, I'm you know me. I'm going to put it together as far as the app process. We're going to start with the restaurants. And we're going to start with just getting everything rolled out. But right. Salute to Grenell, man. He's the reason I'm doing this. He's the reason I... I push so hard and I work so hard and I ain't never gonna stop, man. Right, and, man, uh, no he, doubt. He said, uh, he said that uh, the Havana Mix National Re- was a reveal. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll be alive at 8 a.m. Yeah, we good, man. It's yeah. Still working. That's what it's about, man. That's what it's all about, man. And uh, that's what we got to do, man. Because it's like it's, it's like somebody has to stick to a plan and make it make it transparent. Not only transparent, but to the point where a person can see that, man, it, it's, it's no eyes, man. It, he was weed, man, the whole time. He was like, weed, let's do this. Hey, we can do that. We can do this. We can create we, Black Wall Street. We are Black Wall Street. We are a unit. We are a melting pot. These things that we are, you got to know that we are, and, and, and we are on a whole nother level to be so much bigger than where we at. And, you know, the stuff that I'm doing in L.A., you know I'm trying to bring it there. So right. everything I'm doing. So it's more so about let's, let's let's come together, let's use it as one, let's be as one, and as our people, man, you know, just push forward, man, you know, and, and, and let's have an end goal with seeing everybody win is a good thing, you know, and I mean, it's just to that point now, you know, it's to that point where it's a lot of people that that's have, you know, that's almost there, almost there, and if all those people get together, they all there, you know what Right, man? right, you right. Know, put in, you know, let's go. If they don't put up a hundred, you know, that's a thousand dollars in marketing by themselves. Now that's just one silo. Then another silo do it. Every silo do it. You don't have to get on a thousand times a hundred. I know that's scare people. But if you just do ten people, put up a hundred dollars, that's a thousand in marketing for ten businesses. I mean, somebody needs to start doing that again. And once they catch on, man, I guarantee you, man, black businesses uh, and whatever businesses will blow up, man. And that's what I see out here. And out here in LA everybody doing it out here and when i say everybody you know they start with nothing they come over here start with nothing right and, and go from selling fruit to selling uh, to, to, uh signing up for construction to, to buy to getting all in the house to buying a car to getting a, to getting the car fixed boom 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 next thing you know whoo whoo there it is whole bedroom house in the hill somewhere right and that's what it is man it's like we don't have a proven system Koreans have a town, Mexicans have a town, uh, Jamaicans have a town. Everybody has a town, but we only had a project, man. We just gotta quit that. We gotta, we gotta. Fix well, that yeah, and, and Brunel was definitely for that. So, in, in tribute to Brunel, those are all things like y'all hear Chris talking about. Those are things that we got to be working towards. That Brunel was working towards, and in, in the spirit of how he put things together at, with the positive initiatives. And so, man, Chris, man. You you definitely on point, man. brother, as always, man. About it, man. I just, man. I'm just, I know that that's what he wants, man. And yeah. I mean, it, it just shows you how serious you need to be about it now. Right. It doesn't need to be no games. I mean, nah, not just, at all. Know, it needs to be said. A lot of people like, oh, it's too soon to talk this and talk that. Everybody needs to have a conversation of being who they need to be, when they need to be, how they need to be, it, man. Don't don't be scared to be who you are. If you're an outspoken person and say the wrong thing and they ruffle some feathers, be that person need to run for congress be that person if you need to go live and promote businesses be that person if you need to go live and promote a person working out and and, and losing weight be that person like be you i guarantee you if everybody be themselves man the world will be a better place man so i mean you know i'm I'm excited about where we're going man this is a this is a a celebration i know it's a sad day yeah you know i've been sad all week i ain't gonna lie that's just yeah, it's, it's been, you know, man, it's been tough all week, man. It, it definitely has. And and you and I spoke on some things, man, earlier in the week. Well, well, you man, you know, it, it again, it's tough anytime you got that life transition, man. And like I said, I'm going to share a little bit, man, kind of my you know, a story and how I met Brunel, man, because I kind of met Brunel, you know, indirectly through his dad. Uh, and I met his dad, man, when I was seven years old. You know what I mean? Seven years old, knucklehead kid at the Boys and Girls Club, coming out of the mound. Nobody wanted to deal with us too much. 
Um, but man, he showed us a nice path in terms of Brunel Sr. And, you know, at that time, Brunel was a teenager. So, you know, he, you know, he's older than us, man. But, you know, he, he looked out for us, always had a good word, man. And then when I came of age, you know, he was a brother that always looked out for me, man, from the very beginning. Real, like you say, man, great energy, always passionate about, you know, making moves. And, you know, he, he never saw the pessimism in it. You know what I mean? It was always, man, let, let's go make it happen. What's the ways we can make it happen versus, you know, you know, coming up with all the ways while it won't work. So when you get a guy like that, man, he's, you know, he, he always challenged the envelope and pushed it. So, man, Chris, you definitely on point, man. Man, I'm going to get a couple other people on, brother, man. But thank you, Chris Eagleston, man, for your leadership and for jumping on here first, man, and kind of sharing, you know, those those nuggets and, and man, really sharing your thoughts on Brunel, man. I appreciate it, brother. No problem. No problem. And then it's Eagleston, man. If you're going to call Rihanna, 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 then if she can flip her name. Hey, y'all get up off me and then let me call myself Eagleston, man. Cause y'all, I Didn't I say Eagleston? Did I say Eagleston? So yeah, no, you said it this time, but on the on the when you oh, the it, other one, yeah, I said Eagles still, y'all the other one. Eagles, man, it's Eagles. I'm gonna train. I've been whipping y'all in the shape, man. We'll get we'll get it going, man. No fly doubt, like man. Eagle, man. Don't fry like an egg, man. That's how it is, man. That's how you can remember. How about that? Bro? There you go. <laughs> All right, brother, man. I'll get up with you, mate. Appreciate it. Man. Appreciate it. Good thing, man. Love the show. Love everything you're doing. Full support. And I can't wait to come to Memphis, man. We're gonna do some more things. Man. Yeah, let's do it, brother. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, brother. All right, y'all. So that was Chris Eagleston for those on the podcast, president and CEO of Global Innovation Now. Listen, um, everybody that's on, Chalander, good evening. RL, what's up, brother? Cuzzo, Lisa, Errol, Bridget, Sandra Burke, uh, Jay Prince. Jay Prince, if you want to get on uh, or anybody that wants to get on, just like Chris was, uh, type in the comments for Burnell, for Burnell. And I'll invite you and you can come on live uh, here on the show and uh, share with uh, the audience and myself your um, your thoughts on Brunel. Uh, you can express your condolences if you want to do that and then share your your best memories of it. Um, and so I'm going to wait and see if any of y'all that uh, want to get on. Lawrence Thompson, uh, good evening to you, brother. Um Thank you so much for all of your support and all your help, man. And you, you definitely got a wonderful show going. So shout out to Lawrence Thompson uh, that's joining us now. But um, if you want to, to join on, just type in the comments for Brunel and I'll invite you uh, on to the I Really Mean It show podcast. Uh, Lawrence, if you want to jump in, uh, feel free. I'll invite you. Uh, but anybody that wants to uh, feel free. But. Um, while I'm waiting for anybody that wants to jump on, uh, I'm going to quickly share my story. I started sharing it with Chris here uh, just a minute ago, but um, I met Brunel as a kid. Um, like I said earlier, I was about seven years old or so at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I believe at that time uh, he was somewhere around 16 years old. What up, Damien? How you doing, brother? That's fam right there. Uh, Damien Banks joining uh, on the show. Uh, on the Facebook Live, rather. Um, but yeah, Brunel was somewhere around 16 years old, man. Um, you know, and it was cool because, you know, when we were that young, we were coming out of the mound and, um, you know, we were in the Boys and Girls Club. His dad, Brunel Sr., looked out for us, gave us a, um, a great platform to, in which to learn. And for young boys especially, um, gave us the opportunity to get introduced to manhood and, how to be a man, how to treat ladies, how to um, understand the, the inner workings of being a man out here, and in particular, being a black man out here, right? And so as we came up during the years, of course, you know, with the age difference between myself and, and Brunel, um, he went on, of course, I, I remember going to games at Whitehaven uh, when he played there, kind of late 80s. Uh, I believe he graduated from Whitehaven in 1990. But, man, he was um, always on point, always talking business. When you be around him, even as a kid, you know, we were knuckleheads. We were around there. And, you know, this cat was always talking about how he's going to be progressive and, you know, how he's going to, 
um, get out here and really change the world and work in the community. And he had the pressure of his dad, who's, you know, even then was a legend. And it certainly now is considered a legend. But, you know, Burnell didn't allow that pressure to really get to him. He w- he always would talk about being his own man. He, as much reverence as he gave his dad and, and that kind of thing, man, he was always um, at the top of, of his mindset with, you know, being his own man. And that always kind of resonated with me. And um, if you compare him to his dad, for those that knew Brunel and then knew Brunel's dad, um, Brunel, in terms of the second, a uh, little bit more of a risk taker, a little bit more into the business realm than his dad. Um, but, man, you know, over the years, as I came of age and I got into a professional life. One of the first people to kind of take me under his wing and kind of, you know, show me the layout of things coming from where we grew up at to um, up until now this very point was Burnell. And uh, I can remember starting at the bank, man, and um, Burnell would, uh, you know, he would come by and, and he's one of the first people he would refer business to me, man, when, when people wouldn't, you know, you got to remember when I got into the game, as far as with banking and all that, you know, I was 21, 22 years old. You know, people, you know, they they knew me a little bit. But, you know, when you talk about people having you manage their money and things like that, their nest eggs, you know, they typically don't do that with, you know, young kids like that. And Brunel was one of the first people to refer me some large deals, loan business, deposit business, all that kind of thing when I was at the commercial bank. And I always appreciated that. And anywhere that I went within the industry, he would um, he would follow me. Right. And he would uh, give me pointers and he'd connect me with people and things like that. And he, you know, I always marveled at the time that he would take to do that, considering he had his own businesses and things that he was running. And so I was always appreciative of him of that. Um, I've had a chance to. Uh, be nominated and win Best in Black awards. And I remember even sitting with him um, at the time when he was kind of developing the idea as he was with many of you. And man, it was just, um, it was just phenomenal and how he came up with the whole idea based on, you know, what was out there in the marketplace and how that didn't quite represent the the full community. When you look at the, the demographic makeup of the Memphis community, and then you look at what the top 40 under 40 and some of those with different publications, what they were representing, it wasn't really adding up, right? So, you know, Brunel just took it on himself, you know, hey, we don't need to whine about that. Let's do it. And I remember him calling me about that. And yeah, we didn't agree on every single tactic of it. Um, you know, there were some ideas or, or direction that I kind of saw that um, Brunel didn't quite 100 percent agree with. But that was good. You know, what I mean, that's good kind of back and forth. So um, just to let everybody know, this is the I Really Mean It podcast. Um, for those that are on the podcast, I am also on Facebook Live on my particular profile. And uh, we're talking and giving a tribute to the late Brunel E. Smith, the second who had his funeral today uh, at noon at Mount Vernon and viewing of his body was yesterday. And he's a great friend, brother, uh, mentor, uh, you know, confidant, uh, supporter uh, of many of you, uh, as well as myself. And uh, this is the tribute. So what I'd like for you to do is I would like for you to comment on if you're on Facebook Live and you'd like to come on live with me to talk about Burnell, as you just heard from. Chris Eagleston, uh, who just joined. If you want to join, type in for Brunel uh, in the comments. Um, and I will invite you to uh, join in on this discussion. And I want you to share uh, your thoughts, your memories and whatnot of Brunel uh, if you so choose to. OK, so. If y'all don't do it right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start calling y'all out because I know uh, some of y'all like to talk and some of y'all sure have some great stories and insight on Brunel. So 
Don't be shy. Type in for Brunel uh, to join in on this conversation. Okay? All right, so who wants to join in? All right. Jamie, how you doing? Jeremy, Frat, J Terrell Key, what's going on? Would you like to join? I know you like to join, man. I know you, you know Brunel very well. Damien, what's up, man? You want to join and talk about it? Come on. Yep, come on. I invite any of you to come on. Let's see, Lawrence. Jay Prince, you want to jump on? Jonathan Prince, you want me to invite you? I'd love to have you on, brother. I would love to have you on. All right. So the invite's been given. Dub Deuce, Cardell, Kiana, how you doing? Good evening. Good evening to you all. Damien, come on, man. Yeah, I see you typing. Let's uh, let's get you on live. Come on live with me. <laughs> All right, Chris. Chris, don't mind jumping back on. So you see, I'm gonna jump. I'm I'm gonna let Chris jump back on since y'all uh y'all don't want to do it. Okay, I'm going to let Chris jump back on. So. We're just uh, here on the show, and I want to add in. Let's see. Jonathan Prince, you go to jump on? The invite's been extended, so I'm going to see if uh, what you want to do. For those listening on the podcast, I'm, I'm waiting to see if some folks uh, here on Facebook want to have the courage to jump on and speak some on Brunel, on their brother, on their friend, on their mentor. In whatever role that Burnell served, um, we want to have you added on. So, let's see. Jonathan Prince, you go jump on, or what you going to do? No? All right. Chris, what you want to do? You want to jump back on? While we're waiting on people to jump back on, um, I'm just reading your comment, Damien. Uh, this is Damien Banks, my good fam there. Um, Chris, it looks like you, you made it back, so I'll hold off on that. Chris, you back, man. I'm trying to get them to jump on, but yeah, I can't get nobody to jump on. I can't get them to jump on. Yeah, I was going to say, nobody else wants to talk but you, babe, so I'm giving you the floor back. Man, I'm telling you, man. Well, you know what? We had had this one time when we was uh, after, actually, one of, after the Best in Black Awards. He had invited some folks out, and we was at the uh, Western. And, man, just having a good time, man, it was all about just being just around good people, man. It was good energy. And, uh, Man, what came of that was a lot of people just, you know, really working with each other, man. It really wasn't about money or nothing. It was just more so about the connection. Man, that's what he was big on. Man. He was yeah. big on just, you know, man, just knowing the right people and connecting with the right people, man. I mean, he really was a man of the people, man. That's why I'm, I'm glad they, you know, they honored him today. And, man, and, and sent off in a great way. Not only, you know, putting his name out there as man man of the people, not only that, putting them out there as just like motivating and, and touching so many lives. I mean, and, and, you know, I saw Nina now, and shout out to Nina, man. Yeah, Nina, oh, she, definitely. You know, she's one of the Nona, 
everybody at Tri-State, man, I meant to uh, just salute to them. And, and, you know, best wishes and definitely praying for them with what they got going and, and pushing, you know, pushing forward the envelope of, you know, working with, you know, all of what's coming, you know what I'm saying, is, is the legacy that we'll live on through every entrepreneur, man. You know, I mean, think of all the entrepreneurs he touched. I mean, again, meet me way back six years ago when I was just starting to come, when I just started knowing about apps. Yeah. You know, and, and, and just work with me, not even knowing, here it is six years later, how far technology has gone. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just, you got to remember those things where, you know, you know, it's all about impacting a person's life. You know, you impact the right person and, you know, you'll motivate them to do something. And, uh, man, I forgot we actually are reaching out, um, reached out to me. We're going to build a, a bus. Okay. A bus of, uh, of, uh, of Pernell. And, um, and we're going to, we got, I forgot where we're going to put it, but John Hamilton reached out to me on that. And he was just like, man, let's do it. You know, hey, you know, we got the, you know, the, the, the location. Like I said, he got to tell me about that. But it's all about just, you know, man, you know, being being a man's man and, 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 and treating people right. Man. You know, that's what people are doing. Man. And like I said, Nina and them, they enjoyed, had a big party there for Penel at uh, Club Love, man. And yeah. That's just, you know. Definitely. You know, they, they, that's where he was. He was supporting the melodic Mondays. I mean, to the T. I know it hurt uh, Shane and Jay more than anybody. Man. And, yeah. You know, here he is not being at the party. It's, it's hard to go on, but man, the music. You know, you live on. You know, through through through, through the heartfelt words of good music. Man. You know what I'm saying? So, no doubt. No doubt. Well, man, Chris, hey, I got a couple other people that's gonna jump on, man. But uh, yeah, I guess yeah, if they I'm don't, I'm. Jonathan might want to say some good things too, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Let's yeah. Let's do. It, man. Yeah. Let's do yeah, that, you man. Wanna, Man, that's what it's all about. So, that's yeah, what it's about. It again, let me hop back on, man. No doubt, and, brother. Uh, yeah. I'll get you back on. All right. All right. All right, man. All right. Let me get uh, Damien on. Let's see. Do you want to? I'm not sure if he wants to jump on or not. Uh, Jay Prince. Let me see. Can I connect you in? Jonathan Prince, are you there? Okay, I was trying to see if I could add in Damien. Uh, let's see. Damien, I'm not getting no answer from you, brother. Jonathan Prince, you out there? Yes, no, maybe. Oh, wait a minute, who I got? Jonathan, you out there? Okay, yeah. All right, you're a little choppy, brother. You might have to move around, man. You can catch that good signal. Hey, Jonathan, Jonathan, your, your, your signal coming in weak, brother. Can you hear me? Your signal coming in weak. You might have to go outside. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, I think I'm going to go outside. Yeah, you might have to go outside and stand in the rain, man. <laughs> See, you catch that good signal. <laughs> now, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just just if you go outside, don't don't stand next to nothing metal. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go outside standing don't next to don't, I said don't go outside standing next next to nothing metal. You know, go go outside and try to get you a good signal, man. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna stand next to nothing metal because of the fact, you know, uh I, I don't want to be shocked, you know. I don't, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to be shocked. shocked. But here, I can hear you good now, man. So go ahead and uh, Jonathan Prince is on for those that are on the podcast. Uh, good brother that's doing some things here in the city. 
um, a good strong marketing bond. Hey, you know, share with me how you 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 came to meet Bernal Smith. Well, I met him working for Mr. Frank Banks and uh, Mr. Holyfield down at the Best Western uh, Hotel, and of course at that time he was doing financial services, uh, and he was always enterprising. Uh, this that's one thing I like about him. He was always enterprising. He didn't let nothing stop him. You know, you sit down and you talk about him, you know, and like many people will say, you know, when you bring up an idea, you know, he going to jump on it. And, uh, you know, he might have his opinion about how uh, it was going to be done or how we should do it. But in the end, you know, we came down to a, a uh, conclusion uh, as to what was going to be done. You know, and I, uh, I just really appreciate the, the inspiration and, you know, when he started uh, the uh, high school, I had an opportunity to be a uh, participant in the mentoring program over there. We, we did a tutoring program over at the high school. I, I participated in that uh, when that was set up. And uh, it was always cordial. There's not, you know, there's not a person in this city who can say that whenever they met Bernard, if they wasn't a friend when they first met him, they was a friend before the end of the day with him because he was just that type of person. And I'm looking forward, you know, working uh, with with you and Chris, you know, the three of us, we've been working together for quite some time now on a number of different projects, you know, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with you all on these upcoming projects and everything. But there's a lot of things to be done um, and especially laying the groundwork to honor uh, this great man who uh, put himself out there, you know, as a leader yeah. uh, for many to follow. And I'm so proud, you know, to have known him, to have known his life, to be a part of it, you know, because he, he went out there and he took the lead. You know, he just didn't wait for somebody else to do what needed to be done. He saw a need and he got out there to fulfill that. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was he was definitely an innovator in terms of this community from from our generation standpoint in terms of um, connecting the civic community to, um, you know, the kind of the private sector in terms of, you know, you know, looking for ideas again that push the envelope and kind of, you know, I really saw him as a bridge builder because I saw him, man, you know, he would spend countless hours trying to connect communities that a lot of times you know, would find difficulty in connecting, you know what I mean? Whether it's, um, you know, when he came on with the, the whole banking uh, deal. And a lot of people don't know or, or don't remember his involvement with, uh, with Hope, uh, with Hope Community uh, over there. Um, you know, he was helpful in kind of driving, you know, some of their connection to their loan business and specifically um, initiatives that we worked on in helping the unbanked. You know, Jay Prince, man. So, man, you know, I mean, when you say the unbanked, you know, the, the uh, there's a large uh, population in this community that uh, is not uh, utilizing banking services. So they're utilizing services that are high cost and uh, high fees and that kind of thing that uh, Burnell and I and, and several others. It wasn't just he and I. There were several others that were part of those kind of projects, man. And so. Brunel always had the eye for that kind of thing as to not just how do you capitalize off of it from a um, entrepreneurship mindset in terms of starting a business to capitalize on it, but a lot of entrepreneurship thoughts on how you um, implement an idea that, yes, generates you um, uh, a return, but even more so helps the community. And I think Brunel always kept it in mind, man, to try to balance that. So. I definitely follow you on that, uh, Prince. Yeah, because see, I, I, I remember even in a, a weekend in our office there on Madison, uh, when Chris brought up the uh, community banking program, and uh, and I don't know where we're standing at that right now, Chris, but I know we need to get back to that community banking program. Uh, we talked about doing that community banking program, and, and that's something that we need to invest in 
you know, where we can have our own bank, where we can invest our money to do uh, what we need to do in terms of business and stuff. Because, I mean, we got all these black businesses here in the community uh, that needs some type of financing, uh, some type of help getting a leg up, you know, even now as a credit repair agent. You know, I, I was looking at how can I help, you know, uh, the black business here in this community to get their credit situated so that they could qualify for the 8A and SDB uh, packages that are out there. You know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, your credit plays an important part in that. And uh, Bernal was also on the forefront of that initiative, you know, as well, you know, trying to help, you know, black business get the necessary capital that they need. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely, man. Most definitely, Prince. So any last words you'd like to give to the audience, man, in terms of, of Burnell and, and your memories and thoughts of him? Yes. Uh, one thing I can you know, truly say uh, when I'm you know, having to meet him was one of the most uh, blessed times of my life, you know, because like I say, he was a friend all the way down uh, to the last moment. Yeah. And uh, no matter when you call him, everything, but wherever he saw you and everything, he took the time to. Hey, Jay and, Prince. And him as a part of my life, friend and a brother. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know. He, he was just that kind of guy, you know, he, he became family to you. Right. So, you know, it's, it's time we step, that we all step up. You know, we have a lot of things that we want to do for him uh, and honor his memory and his legacy. And I think it's high time now for us to, you know, to be about him. Yeah, definitely, uh, Jonathan. So you and I need to speak uh, tomorrow morning uh, on some things uh, in all seriousness so we can catch up on some initiatives. But, man, thank you so much for joining. Uh, that's Jonathan Prince, y'all, um, joining one of uh, good brothers that's, uh, again, a, a really solid marketing mind uh, here. So, Damien, I'm, I'm trying to get you on, brother. Um, you were saying it was having some problems working. Uh, you might have to upgrade your phone, man. You got to get rid of that flip phone. <laughs> get rid of that Nokia, brother. Get you an iPhone, man, and get you a Samsung. There he is. There, the, the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, listen, for those on the podcast, this is Damian Banks. He's one of the hosts of uh, the Barber's Chair podcast, which is one of the new hot podcasts that you'll find. Uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, you can see it on Facebook and that kind of thing. But, man, they great commentary and takes. Uh, I enjoy the show. I've had a chance to listen to it. But he's joining here right now. Uh, for those on the I Really Mean It Show podcast, you're not looking on Facebook Live. But Damian Banks is here. And uh, I appreciate it, brother, man, joining. What's going on, man? How you doing? Man, I'm doing wonderful, man. So, man, you know, talk to us, brother, about, you know, how you met Burnell uh, E. Smith and kind of what your first impressions of him was. Uh, first met him in the studio. He came on. He used to be a political insider at Fox 13. And that's just where we would bring in different uh, political minds from either side of the out of bound with each other. And uh, Bernal would come on. And my first impression, he walks into the studio. And he, he spoke to everybody. He was real cool. You would have thought I'd known him forever or whatever. But uh, yeah. After, after watching him battle against the likes of uh, I used to go against uh, Charles Johnson, who was uh, he's on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and I knew Charles. Charles, real smart guy, real smart. And just watching him battle against these guys, I'm like, damn, who, who is this dude? You know? Right, <laughs> right. Finds out he's the publisher of uh, the new uh, the new Tri State Defender. Uh, he knew you. He knows couple members of my family, so, you know, and from that point on, you would have thought that, you know, this brother knew me forever. Right. You know, every time I would see him at the YMCA working out sometimes, he would always go, like, what's up, B? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? You yeah. Know right. <laughs> it, was always, it was always love, man, and, you know, I, I can't say that we were best of friends, but, hell, that's damn near how I almost 
was, man. It just she just gave you that, showed you that love, you know. Right. So Memphis has definitely lost uh, a jewel, man. I mean, brother was only forty five years old, and he had, he had the, the, the the mindset, man, like he's been here before. You know, you would have thought this dude was really older mentally wise. I mean, physically he was he knew he wasn't older, but mentally, right. You know. He was definitely a force and was going to be a bigger force yeah. uh, in this community. And Memphis has definitely lost. Uh, we have lost a, a rising star, man. This, this one is, you know, this one was, is, is heavy. Yeah. This one is heavy. Yeah. No, I agree, um, man. Family well. Um, and wow. Yeah. Man, it, yeah, I agree with you, man. And you and I had a chance to, to speak kind of early on, man. And it was, right. it, it, you know, it, it was a uh, just a punch in the gut because it was so yeah. completely unexpected. You know, I, I remember talking with his dad, man, and you know, his dad had been, you know, going through some things health wise that you know, was kind of progressing, you know, to that point. You know what I mean? Where you know you you transition, but you know, Brunel had just been at the game the night before, man. You know. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, we I had just played golf with him uh, just a couple weeks ago, you know what I mean, for the 100 Black Men Initiative, um, and it was kind of fate, man. I, I you know, I, I had a conversation with him. You know, we, we talked business at a Starbucks, and uh, he invited me out. He needed one more guy on his, his scramble team. And I said, man, yeah, man, I, I'll come out there, dude, and, you know, went out there. I was on his team, man. Man, he was hitting the ball so damn good. I was like, man, shit. <laughs> yeah, Brene, you, you, you talk about you ain't been out here, but Negro, I know you've been out here. Right, right. You know, right. he had his equipment, but he was feeling good, man. He was moving well, you know, in good spirits. You know, it was a good chance for him to kind of get out and relax, man. So it, it, it really hit me in the gut, man, um, to, to hear of his transition. And then this whole week, you know, the thoughts and, and everything have been with the family and, um, all his co-workers and uh, extended family, friends, uh, and that kind of thing, man. It's just been it's been tough. But I I, I know that you know Burnell would want us to carry on, man, and you know you keep that legacy going by you know remembering and reverence, and then you know going and making a difference in the community, man. Definitely. Right, right. And if you don't mind, uh, and I and I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this story, young lady that worked in Fox also. Yeah. Uh, to like do an internship or just learn some things. Um, I told her about Brunel, told Brunel about her, and dude, he didn't even think about it. He said, yeah, I told her to come on. I was like, damn. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> it was no thought into it. He just said, yeah, come on. And yeah. So that's the kind of guy he was. Man. Right. Very open, you know, man. Right. He was that dude. Yeah. He was that dude. He definitely was, man. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you there, fam. He definitely was. Man, any party, any last words you have concerning Burnell E. Burnell E. Smith the second, man? Nah, man. I just, you know, let's try to keep his legacy alive. Um, you know, I actually put, you know, on one of my acts on Instagram, it just Burnell with the, uh, the Tri-State Defender behind him. And, uh, and I actually put legacy Little you know that, yeah. That brother did his thing, man. He so, did. Big ups to him, his family. I, I wish him well. I, I pray for them. Uh, he's a good dude, man. We definitely, man. Yeah, it it definitely was, man. I echo everything you just said there, brother. Uh, that's right. Damian Banks, y'all. Uh, make sure again you check out the Barber's Chair podcast. Um, how often do y'all do the podcast, man? Okay. Uh, hopefully, you know, we enjoyed doing it. We hope you've got some positive feedback, and we hope, you know, everyone enjoys listening. 
Definitely, man. You know, most definitely. So, Damien Banks, man, thank you, brother. Much love to you, and I'll get up with you soon, man. For sure, man. Be good. All right. All right. That's Damien Banks. We need to get a lady on. Um, any ladies that want to get on and speak on uh, your thoughts on Brunel? Uh, we've had the fellas on, um, but I'd like to get some ladies on. I will call you out, uh, the Keisha Green. <laughs> if uh, if you don't raise your hand, but if you put in the comments for Brunel, uh, I will invite you on so that you can speak uh, through your video phone or your device that you're on now watching uh, on Facebook Live. And for those that are on the podcast, uh, I am on Facebook Live and uh, the voices that you've been hearing have been uh, friends and family of mine who are speaking on the life of the late Brunel E. Smith the second. So any ladies that want to jump on, uh, feel free. Um, if not, again, I will call you out. So who wants to join? Anybody want to join? I'm inviting some folks now. So let's see. I don't have any ladies that want to join on. Looks like they just want to watch, but they don't want to join on. So let's see. I'm going to invite. I'm inviting y'all on. Let me see if uh, Miss Anitra Rogers wants to join on. That's uh, Frat Brothers wife. Uh, she's doing great things in this community as well. Uh, beautiful family. Let me see if she wants to join on and, and be live. In the meantime, while we're, we're waiting on uh, Mrs. Rogers or anybody else that would like to join, um, like I shared with Damien, you know, my, my last time speaking to Brunel now uh, was actually three weeks ago from today. Uh, we played in a golf tournament over at Galloway. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to Doc. Uh, shout out to uh, Mewante Stewart. Uh, we were on a four-man scramble together out there at Galloway. And, um, you know, Brunel was in such great spirits, man. He's, he seemed relaxed. Uh, man, he had, you know, some real cool golf gear. I was like, man, you uh, <laughs> you play for real, don't it, man? Uh, you know, he showed up, man. He, and I think it was like in the, the Whitehaven Tigers uh, colors, too. So I was like, man, this this cat's out here. He's for real. And, uh, you know, man, we just had a great time, man. Um, was hitting the ball well. Um, man, it, it was just awesome to uh, to see him uh, after we had talked business the day before. So, man, that was the last time that um, I saw him. Uh, that was the last time I spoke with him. Uh, we were, of course, we're going to follow up and uh, kind of do our thing from there. But, man, um it, it it just has has hit me so hard as it hit the hall of us and, and kind of shook this community on this week and um and you know his transition I think we should all uh, look at what we're doing in terms of how we're utilizing our voices and utilizing our talents to help this community and then more so what are we doing for ourselves. Um, to make sure that we reduce the stresses and the, the tension that sometimes we take on and make sure that we take time for ourselves. Um, we, we get so caught up into grit and grind as this city and we want to grind, we want to work. We're such workaholics. And, you know, that stress is such a silent kind of thing that can creep up on you, man. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure, too, that you're, you're getting the proper rest and doing the things that you need to do right to be able to function and be at your very best. You know, it's like anything else. You know, you have to give it the proper attention and you've got to cultivate it and you've got to take care of it. Right. Or you could wear yourself out. So the body works the same way, like a lot of different things. You got to um, you got to make sure you're taking time to take care of it. But, you know, I definitely miss Brunel. Um, I was hoping some more of y'all might want to jump in uh, on the live, but uh, as we see that uh, there are no others, um, I'm going to give just my final word. Um, 
man. Uh, whew, boy. Um, definitely, um, the thoughts are with uh, the Smith family, with his children, uh, with his uh, outstanding and lovely wife. Uh, definitely thoughts and prayers of myself and my family. Um, those that knew Brunel best, those that maybe didn't know Brunel but were inspired by Brunel, um, definitely the, the thoughts are, are with all of you. Um, as you go through this extremely tough uh, time in the, the life transition of uh, your father, your brother, your husband, your cousin, your uncle, and I'm really going to miss you, brother. Um, I'm really going to miss you. So um, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you who are watching. And when I use that hashtag Legacy Living, um, that actually came through conversation, not only with Brunel, but with his dad, uh, Brunel Smith Sr. And I use that hashtag. It's more than just that. Uh, it's a way of life. Legacy living is uh, how you live and and what do you what lives uh, when you're no longer here in the physical, when you transition that life. And so um, thank you all so much on the Facebook live. Um, if anybody wants to jump in on anything last and be a part of the show, um, I'd like to get some ladies on, but it doesn't seem like anybody uh, wants to jump on. So I, I'm going to invite you on. And uh, if you want to jump on, feel free. If not, I definitely understand. Um, but uh, I'm RGB. This is the I Really Mean It Show podcast. Um, and again, I thank you all so much for your attention, for your feedback. I'm already getting inboxes and things like that. So I really appreciate that. And you all have a great night. RGB. Hug your loved ones. Love your loved ones. Because not only is life short, but life is so precious. And every day is an opportunity. Put aside your pettiness. Put aside your gripes and your beefs and all this kind of things. And your disappointments, your embarrassments. And make sure that you really... Give your all for your friends and your relatives because it can be over at any time. None of us have a guaranteed lease on life. Life is just like checking into a hotel. You check in and at some point you check out. But it's all about what you do with your stay, right? And what impact you have with your stay. So I'm RGB. This is the I Really Mean It Show podcast and peace.